Hey kids, welcome to uh, Unit 4, Lesson 4, Logical Operators, Exercise Number 1. We have an investigate and modify. Run the program to observe the results. Then experiment with the program by making one of the following modifications. Change one line at a time, then run the program after each change to observe the result. We have a bunch of things to do. Let's look at our code real quick. Under my console, we're instantiating a new object, CS course. It is from the course class. It is passing along Miss Loveless as a parameter. Then CS course is calling the prompt for grade method. Let's take a look at the course class. We have one private instance variable. It is a teacher. Our constructors taking one parameter teacher. We have a get method, get to teacher. We have a method prompt for grade. And this is using the scanner class. And we're setting score initially to zero. As long as score is not equal to negative one, we're going to print off enter the student's score or negative one to quit. Then we're going to prompt the user for a number. That's the next int. And then we're going to store that as the score. Then it looks like we're closing it off. So this method looks like you can input scores to store. Print results takes one parameter entered scores. If the score is valid, we're going to print off that score. Is valid score looks like a method down here. We'll get to that in one second. Else, if our entered score equals negative one, we're going to say goodbye. Any number not valid or negative one, we're going to say that score is not valid. Try again. Is valid score is testing for a result. If the score is greater than 50 and the score is less than 100, that result is true or a valid score, and we're returning those results. So it looks like only valid scores are 50 to 100. Let's head back to my console. Let's run the program and observe the results. Let's hit run, enter a student score. I'm going to enter a 90. How about a 75? And if you remember, is valid score was 100 to 50. Let's try 50. That should be a valid score. 49 should not be. We should get an error saying that's not a valid number. And we did. 100 should be a valid score. 101, though, we should get an error. And then if we hit negative 1, we should get a goodbye. And it looks like we do. Number one, enter different values and observe the results. For example, what happens when you enter 90? What about 40? What about negative one? Now we just kind of went through these kids. This one's testing to see if a number is between 100 and 50. And if it is, we're gonna say that score is the score. If we enter an invalid number, we're gonna say that score is invalid, try again. What's invalid? Anything below 50, anything over 100. If we hit negative one, that's our sentinel value. That gets us out of the program. Let's look at number two. In course Java, change the and in the is valid score method in line 45 to or. Run the program and enter values to observe the results. How are these results different? Let's head over to course Java. Let's go to line 45. And we're changing this and to an or. First off, how do we do an OR? If you look above your Enter key and hold the Shift key down, you'll get a line. And that is the OR. Two of them make the OR function. Now it's saying if a score is greater than the number 50 or less than the number 100, it's going to be true. And that should be any number. Well, let's see if we're right, kids. Let's hit Run. And our new score, let's enter one in between 75. That's going to be true. A number greater than 50, well, that's now 150. 
so that's a valid score, and any number less than 100, so let's try something like 45, that is now a valid score too, because it's testing both sides. Is the number greater than 50 or less than 100? And that's pretty much every number. Negative one should still end the method. This changed it instead of having to meet both criteria, it only had to meet one. And how our statement is written, one is pretty much every number. Let's look at number three. In course Java, try changing the condition in is valid score method on line 45 to if the score is not greater than or equal to 50 and the score is less than or equal to 100. Let's copy this because I know I'll spell that one wrong. So control C. Let's highlight the line we have to change. Control V. Let's take a look at this statement. This exclamation point is the not operator. I like to think of this as the reverse UNO card. Whatever is written inside this parentheses, it's going to be reverse. This is saying if the score is not greater than 50 and the score is less than 100. That means in this expression, the only valid numbers should be under 49 because numbers 50 and greater will result in false. Let's try that out, kids. Let's hit run. Let's try a valid number, 49. Let's try an invalid number, 55. A number over 100, 110. And again, we'll try 20, valid number. So you can see how this exclamation point reverses the Boolean statement with it. And kids, whenever you see a not operator, it's always a good idea to do a truth table. And the first time I did this exercise, I actually messed up this question pretty bad because I kept thinking that the score also would be valid if it was greater than 100. Once I did the truth table you see on the screen now, I realized the error I made and the statement just made more sense. So there's a good reminder, kids, with these compound operators, sometimes it's just a good idea to do a truth table to make sure we're getting the right answer. Key takeaway from this lesson is understanding the use and reason why we use truth tables. And those are just to determine the truth values of a Boolean expression what a compound Boolean expression is, and that's just an expression using logical operators that evaluates to a Boolean value. This lesson taught us about and or, and how the not operator is the reverse UNO card that reverses the Boolean expression. One thing that I did not talk about in this video, but will definitely come up not only on the CSA exam, but probably in your lesson, is the term short-circuited evaluation. And whenever we have a compound Boolean expression, like an and, when both sides have to be true, if the first one is false, there's no reason to test a second expression. In that case, we just say it's false and move on. That's called a short-circuited evaluation. Hopefully, kids, this video helps you understand logical operators a little better. As always, if you have any questions, come see me. Otherwise, I'll see you on the next video. See you later, kids. Bye. Bye.